Alright, Amadu Onana to Man United boast. Guys, this is a story that I want to hear, guys, because I know that that midfield of Man United, if I don't having Onana, Kazimiro, Amrabat, Kobe Menu, I think will be good to go with the likes of Mason Man. I'm, I'm talking about the double pivot players, you know. This is a guy that Eric Ten Hag has been really patrolling ever since he came in throughout Man United, but it looks like things are not going to hate to obviously go on as planned, but Manchester United continues to obviously get to the next level of things. Welcome to this channel, Andre Onana. We are talking about two Onanas, right? Andre Onana is yet in the mix, having gone ahead to save a penalty over Copenhagen. David McDonald, a United correspondent for Man United, sorry, for the Daily Mirror, has come and obviously given us a hint about what this man is all about. And lastly, Ben Deir is pissed off with Van der Sar's reply to his, uh, to his comment that he was really his idol, a person he looked at, and Van der Sar came out and said, no, however much you are, but I believe Andre Onana is still the best. So, we thank God for the gift of life, Rock and David is my name, you can as well call me RD, smash the like button, comment and share if you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel, so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily, and let's set the ball rolling like never before. The Muslims, Barak Laufiku, my brought here story that United are really looking at a double signing coming in from Everton because of the problems they're really having. That is Breathweld, the defender, and Amadu Onana. And today we've gotten a story from Alex Crook, one of the people that I really trust when it comes to stories of transfers. He was very he was very accurate in the recently concluded two summers. He has gone ahead and said Everton could be forced to sell Amadu Onana to resolve their financial problems. The midfielder is in crosshairs of clubs like Manchester United and Chelsea. Now, Amadu Onana, I told you he's like 21, 22 years of age. Very young player that has still three years to hit his prime. And his physical build up is title made for the Premier League. He's talented, press resistant, he scores goals, he's hard working. He's this modern kind of player that every manager would obviously walk in and be with love. And for a manager like Eric Ten Hag, who likes intensity, and those workaholic players, this guy ticks all the boxes for Eric Ten Hag, as I explained to you into the video I did like two days back. Now, for Amadu Onana to be one of those players that Man United is interested in is really a very good <clears throat> is really a very good message to him, and I think he's going to charge up. And this story comes up, we're obviously going to face them on Sunday at their stadium, that is the Goodusons Park. We are going to the Master side and you're facing Everton that side. A game that's not going to be very easy as I'll come through with the match preview that is um, I think um, on Friday morning because that game is going to be played on Sunday. Remember we do a match preview two days to the game so we'll be doing the match preview then. But one will say why would a team like Everton want to sell Amadu Onana? Obviously there is need for money. Everton is still in problems of administration. And I've seen a story that Spurs are the ones that really led to Everton to obviously go ahead and obviously fell into these problems because they wanted 80 million pounds and Spurs offered 60 million pounds for Ricky Alson. So they are still playing a blame game and they've gone ahead to obviously put in their defense to see to it that they petition the FA to obviously reverse their decision of obviously taking po 10 points of them but in so doing as they're doing that they're looking at a team that can offer them 50 million pounds in Amaudu Onana remember this guy was brought in I think from the Belgian side and he has been playing for Everton for for now this is um I think this is the second season he's playing for Everton right and he's showing what we call <coughs> ultra potential in all what he's putting up on the field of play and that being called for, United are some of the teams that have been following this man and they want this player. They want this player. Ten Hag has proven to be a manager who goes in for physical players, especially in the midfield, the central defense, and the forwards. When you look at the players he brought in, like um, the players he brought in, like <coughs> Amrabat, um, the other players like... Uh, 
Amrabat, uh, Rasmus Hoyland, they are all physical and it's going to hate to realize that physicality is what you need to obviously get past your enemies in the Premier League. And we've seen it that even the managers like Mikel Ateta have gone ahead to give it as a reason as to why they went in for Declan Rice. And talking about <coughs> Declan Rice, you would really see how good this player is when he comes in at Arsenal. Sorry, when he came in at Arsenal. And at West Ham, you saw to it that he's like an overrated player, but when you look at how Declan Rice is playing at Arsenal, he exactly looks like a 100 million pound player. And I think <coughs> it, will, um, it will resolve out at Man United the same if we get in a Maudi Onana because he'll be playing for a team that plays most of the time with the ball and his impact is going to be felt, you know? And if he's to go at Chelsea because Chelsea are competitors, then you'll see to it that he'll play the double pivot with Caicedo and then Enzo Fernandez is played as a central attacking midfielder. So this guy, I think January is when he's leaving Everton. Everton has to bring in money to stabilize their books. If they don't stabilize their books, then everything will continue to see to it that even more nine points will be deducted off them because there is a proposal that more nine points are taken off the team of Everton. I don't know how they're obviously going to work it out, but all in all, we have to obviously embrace what a decision has gone ahead to be made for this guy. But I would love him to see, I, would I would love to see a Maudu on at Man United. That is it. If there is a player I'm obsessed to see coming through and play for Man United, it's none other than a Maudu Onana. That is it. I'm really obsessed to see to it that this guy comes in through and plays for the club of Manchester United. So guys, that is it for Maudu Onana. Everton are having financial problems. And by the way, when you look at the players they're really having, he's the most expensive player they're really having that can obviously get them some good money like 60 million pounds when you look at jamin pickford i think is 30 million pounds michelenko is like 30 uh breath is like 40 um idris Agwe is like 20 uh which other player so they don't have very many players. I think even Calvert Lewin, but Calvert Lewin has a problem that he has been injury prone, and not him can go in the January transfer window and spend huge on him. Yet he has proven an injury prone player. <clears throat> that is it. So that is it coming in from Amadu Onana being linked to Man United. Let's wait and see how that pans out. But it's one of those signings that will obviously excite me as a player for Manchester United. And I hundred percent believe if I totally qualify for the Champions League, we might go in for a high profile Premier League midfielder like. Amaudu Onana because we'll go to the round of 16 and they'll look like if we go if we go past the round of 16 then we will obviously go into the quarterfinals and there will be a chance for us to obviously get in more money from the Champions League and Amaudu Onana offers you that especially in that midfield when you're playing teams like Bayern Munich, Aman City, PSG and so many more. Now let's go to Andre Onana. The other one was Amaudu Onana. Let's go to Andre Onana. <clears throat> the Manchester United football correspondent for the Daily Mirror, that is David McDonald, he uses his uh, his handle as at Disco Mirror. That since the penalty saved against Copenhagen, Andrew Nana has not been the same at the training center. People who meet him daily report that he has regained his usual enthusiasm uncertainty giving way to confidence that's it i was one of those people that really stood firm with this guy i knew it was just a matter of time for him to obviously get to the levels we saw him perform at ajax and inter milan especially in the champions league finale people were really downplaying him but i told people that just give the guy time the guy will soon come good and guess what the guy has soon come good and is one of those players that you'd love to watch i know People were really laughing at Ondro Nana, slitting him. But I came out and told them that that is really bad because you cannot really see or determine what the goalkeeper is obviously going to become in a period of just six, seven games. And see to it that by the time I was going to hate to hit, I think, 20 games because you're going to hate to play um, 12 games in the Premier League. 
two games in the Carabao Cup. That makes them 14. We've gone ahead to play four games into the Champions League. And he has been the goalkeeper in all games. Those are 18. Now, as we're going to hit, obviously, hit the 18th game, you see to it that Andrew Yonana is becoming a better and better player. So, it obviously has to come out like that. And you have to appreciate everyone who, was, who goes ahead to obviously get us to that level and give us the best that we deserve in here onto the United Matters channel. And a lot is yet to come from him because... I think he has had a better start than David De Gea. David De Gea came in through and he had a defense that had Nemanja Vidic, John Evans, Ferdinand. He had uh, Patrice Evra. He had, uh, I think, Wes Brown. There was uh, this other guy, uh, Rafael Da Silva. He had Michael Carrick with him. But that defense was really good. But the goalkeeper couldn't obviously have good performances. But for Andrew Nana, I think he has had a first better season than David De Gea. He's the third best clean sheet goalkeeper or clean sheeted goalkeeper in the Premier League. So it shows you that however much people are calling him bad, but he has gone ahead to become good ever since he saved that penalty against Copenhagen. Look at the game of Man City. Three 1v1 saves against Erling Haaland. You know, he's really good and has kept us in the game. And he's no longer making the mistakes he used to make when he was making his debut at the club of Manchester United. Then we go to Bendeir, the understudy of Andrew Onana. He's really pissed off with Edwin van der Sar. Remember, Bendeir came out and said that van der Sar was his role model. He looked up to him and he's happy to be at Man United because he's vying to take over the spot that this man was in at Man United since 2000, from 2006 to 2011. That is uh, Ben Dayer for you. Now, Edwin van der Sar came out and replied to him and told him that, uh, and told him that uh, Norway, I love that I've, I've been your mentor, but Andrew Onana is still my favorite. Now, a story is coming in from Turkey, a source from Turkey, and this guy is known as Yagiz Sabunkochul, is confirming to us that Edwin van der Sar's words greatly upset. Bendeir and his representative. They spoke to Manchester United's communication team about this. Bendeir showed a very good performance yesterday night in the match in which he was happy. Obviously, Bendeir came on through when the goalkeeper really got an injury and came on through and he put in a very thrilling performance on the night. So, to me, I don't find that really important because everyone is entitled to his own opinion. How can someone really feel offended with such a statement put out by Edwin van der Sar, you know? Edwin van der Sar said, I respect what you've gone ahead to say. I can't wait to meet you when I return in Manchester, but Andrew Onana is my favorite. That is it. So, if you played your card and you expected a different answer from, from um, Edwin van der Sar, then you shouldn't go ahead and obviously go on and really feel bad because it's you who obviously poked him to obviously give you that answer. Not so. So, for me, I don't find that any big issue and that mentality should change because if just a statement can obviously make you feel bad and you're playing at Man United, yet there are big things coming up for you, Mr. Bendeir and your representative, you need to obviously act better. You know, you can do more than that. So, thank you guys for watching it through. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rokan David remains my name. Your thoughts on to Amadu Onana to United Boost are welcome in the comment section below. And what are your thoughts about... Andrew Onana becoming better ever since he saved the Copenhagen penalty. Do you believe with these people? Do you believe in what this person is really saying? And lastly, what are your thoughts about Bendeir pissed about Edwin Vanders' statement? May the living to God bless you abundantly. The Muslims, Barak Laufikum, I'm out.